This week on Sailing Sweet Ruka. We think maybe uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, the best will be gone away and we're going to be running into some worst type conditions. So we'll see how that goes. Welcome to Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. We met while racing sailboats in the Midwest, but decided to sell everything and sail around the world in our J46 via Cape Horn, the Mount Everest for sailors. Well guys, what we've got here is potato salad and pasta salad. We were running the engine to uh, get through a little light spot, and plus we had an extra jerry can of fuel that we wanted to use up. So we topped her off, motored for a little bit, and I used our little electric hot plate so we could save on some propane while we were motoring. So yeah, we've got these uh, meals made up, so now it's just a quick grab and bite. And uh, fortunately it's not too cold yet, so it's okay to have a nice cold meal at this time, but uh, yeah, it will save me a little bit as we head towards much rougher weather, so. We talk about going to electric cooking maybe someday, but for right now, this is the the way we've got it. We were able to get a, a hot plate before we left the Caribbean that has our 110 outlet plug-in, so I do have to babysit him because he's not on the gimbal, but it's not too bad, especially when the conditions are nice and calm like it is right now. But yeah, it helps a little bit, saving on the propane, and maybe we'll have electric cooking sometime in the future. You want some, don't you, buddy? Good evening, everybody. It is day two of our sail. It took us probably a good day at sea to really get used to everything again and uh, really shake all the cobwebs out. Kate and I had a big conversation about what we should do. Should we call this whole sail off because there's some forecast for some breeze that normally we really don't want to sail in? If there's stuff in the mid to high 30s and getting into the 40s, we try and avoid it. That's where we, I think, at least, I feel you get into uh, the danger zone uh, and problems uh, can start to occur. You can start to break things. But the boat is also built well and we have the sails to sail in this condition. Uh, we have four reefs in our main. Uh, we have a sail. We also have a storm jib, which is very small. As far as dealing with the sea state, that's a whole nother issue. Um, obviously the boat is built well but we sit pretty low to the water. If we go too slow, we can have the issue of following seas catching us and breaking into our cockpit or even onto our solar panels, which are kind of a, a low hanging fruit in the back. They're really not designed for you know, big breaking, breaking seas. That's really the only main concern. Uh, the rig is good. We've got really good standing rigging. We've got really good running rigging. Everything's Dyneema. Uh, the mass is stout and carbon fiber. All of our standing rigging is BSA rod rigging. So uh, we're, in, we're in pretty good shape. And that was all replaced in 2019 as well. So it's fairly, fairly new. We feel good about everything. The other question is if you have an autopilot failure in big conditions downwind like that, then you know somebody has to drive the boat. And with only two of us, uh, that can catch up really, really quickly. So uh, we do have a second autopilot ram on board, which we can install in an emergency. Uh, and we also have a second autopilot computer, which is installed, uh, as well as a second compass uh, and a second speed relay and a second wind sensor. So we've got backups on everything. We decided after a lot of discussion that we're going to send it. We've been waiting too long for this. Uh, we finally have a window that we can use. A downwind is always better than upwind. So if we can manage the sea state, we're gonna be okay. The only big risk to what we're doing is that there's absolutely no bailouts for hundreds and hundreds of miles. If the conditions get larger than uh, what we 
had hoped or planned for, we just have to deal with it. Uh, we have no choice other than to sail through uh, what we've chosen because there's nothing out there between here and the Falkland Islands or the Maldinas, depending on uh, the country you're from. So that's it. You can see our route. We've got everything going pretty well. The new nav station setup is working awesome. I'm really glad that we made the choice to switch from a laptop to a permanently installed touchscreen computer. It really makes things nice. And as you can see, it finally opens up the chart table down here so that I can lay out uh, paper charts and uh, also keep tabs there. And we're going to keep on sailing tonight. We're having a good time. The boat's moving really, really well. The bottom on the boat feels really, really good. Uh, we're really, you know, up there in the high 90s and uh, even exceeding 100% boat speed, which is really, really good, especially with um, an ablated bottom. You know, that feeling when the boat just leans over and starts sailing at her full potential, and you know that's because you have a good clean bottom, you just can't beat that. So I'm gonna end it with that and show you a little bit more about what's going on on the computer, and I will sign off for tonight. See you later. Okay, time to put a reef in tonight. Let's do this. But the wind is starting to get up above 20, so we're going to chuck this reef in. Actually, the second reef. We moved all of our reefs up from uh, the first, second, third to the second, third, and fourth. So we're going to put in the second reef right now. Actually, let's just go right to the third reef. Why not? So it could probably use just a touch more halyard, but we're not gonna worry about it too much right now. If we can fix it later, these things always change. It's just a gear shift. Check out that moon, guys. It's a full moon. Really don't even need all these lights on to see what I'm doing. The only reason I turned all the lights on on the boat was for you guys, so you guys could watch a reef put in. I know you guys like that stuff. And okay. Hope you guys see the same full moon at home and imagine sailing by it. It's really, really nice. Well guys, before I had to put that reef in, I was out hand steering for a little over an hour and uh, it was just awesome conditions. Anywhere from about 15 to 17 knots of wind, right on about 120 degrees true, and just blasting along at eight to nine knots with uh, a full number three jib and a full main. Really, really good time. The full moon made it so you could see everything, almost just like daylight and we had the stereo going, and it was just one of those, uh, those perfect nights at sea that everything just comes together in those moments and makes everything worth it. That's, that's the best. <laughs> so uh, we think maybe uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, 
the best will be gone away and we're going to be running into some worst type conditions. So we'll see how that goes. And for now, I'm gonna rest a little bit. See ya. Sit down. Uh, trying to time it. Kate just made us an excellent salad. So, what do we do today so far? We tightened our steering cables. They were just a little bit loose. There was a little bit of slop and play in the steering. Uh, I think we missed that. Uh, and when we had the rudder out, put everything back together. Curtis also just shook out. Uh, we had the third treatment, so now we have no waste. We've got a full mainsail and full tip. We're moving right along. The seas are a little bit... Definitely confused. Confused, yes, is a good word. I, I took another seasickness pill this morning, turned on. I take a half pill, that seems to do me the trick. So I managed to make us some fresh salad with the last of our, pretty much the last of our fresh ingredients. Yeah, we're gonna enjoy this and then we'll be preparing for big weather coming up. Oh guys, the waters are almost like a turquoisey green, and it's really beautiful. Instead of that deep blue, it's, it's kind of a green now. But anyways, yeah, we're gonna give the autopilot a, a little break while the weather's nice. Get some sun, get some fresh air while it's still warm. It's uh, it's day three. Yeah, we're on Port Port Tack here in Port Jive, going downwind. Talking about 165, 175 in these waves. True wind angle is set to 157. So we're, we're a little bit wonky in these waves, but they seem to have calmed down a little bit from this morning. We haven't done a whole lot of filming of our maneuvers because we're really trying to conserve energy for the big weather that's coming. So if you're not seeing a lot of that B-roll footage, that's why, but uh, we'll try to get you some sailing shots here and we'll do a little hand steering to give autopilot a rest. Um, from here on out, it's gonna be pretty gnarly, so this will be the last of our, we'll call it comfortable conditions. All right, here we go. Everybody has their job, nine to five, and getting drained. The settle for second best, scared to risk what the future might bring. What the future might bring.
With sunny skies ahead of us, we took notice when big dark clouds were rolling in behind us at an alarming rate. Big winds were expected to arrive at some point, so we decided to throw in our fourth reef for the first time, just to be safe. Hey guys, you can see behind me, we've got what looks like something coming. Uh, we're not quite sure. There's uh, some forecasts that are calling for up to 50 knot gusts. This could be just fog. We're really not sure uh, what's inside. So uh, we've got everything. We got down to the fourth reef and the, uh, the jib is, is furled really small, just a sliver. So we'll see what happens. The wind is supposed to build a lot at midnight tonight. And we just want to be prepared because this is a significant change in the weather. And uh, we don't want to get caught out. But it looks like these clouds have rolled over us at this point and really not much has changed. So uh, hopefully all this prep is for nothing. And it's just low clouds. What's going on? Nothing like some strange fog to really give you the creeps enjoying our pizza and we saw these clouds come out of nowhere. By the time I grabbed the camera they were they like cut the distance in half by the time uh, I was able to capture them and, and it's, we're in just like a cloud right now and the wind conditions didn't change too much so who knows we'll see we're not familiar with this area and what this means so hopefully the models will be right and it's just some weird fog. But if not, we're prepared, so all is well for Sweet Ruka. Next time on Sailing Sweet Ruka, we're quite a ways offshore when we finally encounter some of the biggest waves we've seen yet. A special thank you to our patrons for making these videos possible. Check out our Patreon page to get the real-time updates, and don't forget to subscribe and come along for the ride. See you next time!